Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, on yesterday's show, you may recall we were joined by the Conservative MP Robert Halfen and the Labour MP Jess Phillips, and there was something of a row about apprentices and pay. Have a look at this. The industrial strategy, for example, ha uh, talked about the government spending two and a half billion on apprenticeships by 2020, and over 53 percent of uh, what's the pay uh, disparity apprentices between are women? Women, men, yes, women, women get paid well, a pound less no, as apprentices. No, no as they men. don't. If you look at the they stats, women actually do. Look, women actually get paid more. Women they, actually get paid five more. Five pound women eighty-five versus four pound eighty-two. Right, we might have to test that. Is that true? Uh, the surveys that I saw said that suggested that women get paid more than uh, male apprentices. Surveys suggested, but you don't know for a fact. Oh, well, maybe well, it's something we need to yeah. check. We said we would look into it, and we have. They've been working away in the Daily Politics research team. Now, there is nothing to support your claim, Robert Halfen, that women apprentices earn more than men. The figure that Jess quoted, um, that's £5.85 for men, £4.82 for women, it, that's from a Young Women's Trust report, which does suggest female apprentices are paid £2,000 a year less than their male apprentices, but women aren't necessarily being paid less than men in the same apprenticeship roles. Oh, yeah. It's to do with sectors men and women tend to go into. So do you want to revise what you said well, before? Uh, I'm very happy to revise it, but let me find where I thought that I had seen this and I will send it on to you. Yeah, no, do. Yes, well, that's not the end of the story. So that was yesterday. Well, Robert Halfon got in touch with us after the programme and gave us the following figures and sources. He directed our attention to the 2014 Apprenticeship Pay Survey done by the Department for Business, which estimates that the average hourly pay for Level 2 and 3 female apprentices across England is higher than for males, £6.38 as opposed to £6.16 for men. Jess Phillips, however, was quoting from a Young Women's Trust report done in March 2016, which found that female apprentices are paid £4.82 an hour and men are paid £5.85. So that's as clear as mud then. To help provide some clarity, we're joined now by Matt Whitaker, Chief Economist at the Resolution Foundation, a not-for-profit research and policy organisation, which says its goal is to improve outcomes for people on low and modest incomes. Welcome to the programme. So can you clear it up for us? Who is right when it comes to who is paid more per hour as an apprentice? Well, the, the, the great news in the interests of harmony is they're both right. Yeah, God, I knew you were um, going to say that. These things are always <laughs> more complex than you want them to be, aren't they? So it is, it is true that uh, looking at the, 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 the latest survey we've got for apprentices uh, specifically uh, and looking at hourly pay rates, just basic hourly pay rates, then there is a small gap and it is in favour of female apprentices over male apprentices. However, that gap reverses as you move up the spectrum. So if we're thinking about lower level apprentices, for instance, then, then women tend to earn more than men. But if we look at the higher level apprentices, and those are the apprentices that actually we really want to drive, those are the ones where you can see a genuine wage return, then you see men earning more than women. And what's the reason for that? I think it, it does come down to the fact that they are working very different roles. So nine in 10 of those entering an engineering apprenticeship uh, last year were men and eight in 10 of those entering a health and social care apprenticeship last year were women. So I think in many ways, the gender debate around apprenticeships is something of a red herring. You know, we know a lot about the gender pay gap and it really starts to kick in later in a person's career around sort of childbirth. At the point at which people are entering the labour market, we don't see so much of that going on. And I think on apprentices, there are, there are bigger issues with apprenticeships rather than what's going on between men and women. Right, although it does feed into a broader debate about equal pay, of course, for men and women. But, but that is where the focus is. It depends which sector you actually enter. So it's still the case that women are entering what might be termed as poorer paid professions over a, a lifetime of working, such as childcare or health. Um, and men are still going into construction and engineering in much larger numbers. Is that the case? That's right. And actually, I think interestingly as well, when you switch from looking at uh, the hourly pay rate that you get in your job to thinking about what's more important for living standards, so what do you get over the course of a week, then you start to see a bigger gap again in favour of men. And part of what's going on there is male apprentices working more hours than female apprentices, but also you're seeing that men are going into roles where they're getting paid overtime. 
and female apprentices aren't necessarily getting that. Men are going into roles where they're getting bonuses and female apprentices aren't necessarily getting that. So, so mm. those sectoral choices that are, that are happening are then driving what's going on in terms of the pay. When you look at like for like, though, if they were a man and a woman were starting as apprentices in the same profession, would they be paid equally? And, is, you know, do the statistics back that up? As far as we can push the statistics, because the problem is, and this, this, is a, this is a point for government that they need to actually improve the statistics around this so that they can actually monitor what's going on with the policy. So the statistics that we have are A, a little bit old, and mm. B, it's just not that big a sample. And because there is such a, a distinction between the roles that men and women are going into, it's very, very hard to actually, uh, in a robust way, control for everything else and say, in the same roles, are they getting paid at the same wage? Is there anything that surprises you about these statistics or how helpful they actually are when in the end it comes down to trying to attract women to go into different types of professions than they have traditionally? No, this is exactly the same phenomenon we have in Australia. It's about um, gender and occupation. It's not about equality of pay for equality of work. But it has been about of equality of pay in the past and that's only been rectified recently? Uh, well, not recently. Over many, many years um, there has been equal pay for equal work, um, like work. But the um, exactly the same thing happens in Australia. Um, uh, Female apprentices tend to go into areas like childcare and health work. Uh, males focus more on engineering and the like and everything that's been said about um, overtime and bonuses and things, that would apply as well. Exactly the same situation. So the question is, uh, why is it mm. that women go into the lower paid occupations? Are there obstacles to them going into the higher um, paid occupations? Do they want to? Um, these are very difficult questions to answer, but it seems to me that is the central issue to address. And how do you think that can be addressed? I mean, that, that is the, the difficult question and one that I don't think we've necessarily got answers for right now, but I think the key thing is, in terms of the apprenticeship policy that the government's put in place, it is welcomed you know, across the spectrum as being something that is a, a worthwhile thing to do. But the, the key is to make sure that we get quality as well as quantity on the apprenticeships and ensure that we actually are creating new opportunities for people, supporting young people and really providing a wage boost. Because at the moment, the, the bigger statistic here is that if you have a higher level apprenticeship, then you are getting a wage boost compared to somebody who doesn't do an apprenticeship. But if you're in a lower level apprenticeship, then actually a lot of the time you just don't see a wage boost. Right and what about the numbers on the quality of the apprenticeships that then lead to those higher paid jobs? What, what are the figures now for that? Is it improving? It's, it's been improving a little bit over the last uh, few months actually so since we've had the apprenticeship levy put in place we started to see some improvement in the numbers there but clearly it's very early days and as I've said already you know, we just don't have particularly good data on this and I think alongside introducing a policy, you know, a policy which is raising lots of revenue and, and uh, creating some, you know, some upheaval for firms mm. and is, is billed mm. as being a big uh, boost to productivity and a boost to skills growth, we need to have the tools in place to actually monitor it and make sure it's, it's, it's working. And what is the response from companies? Because as you say, it is quite a big upheaval and a cost. I think companies generally are, are quite supportive. Uh, I think one of the issues for companies is that they've had quite a lot coming in at the same time. So alongside the apprenticeship levy, you've also had you know, increased auto-enrolment on pensions. You've also got a big increase in the, in the wage floor in terms of the national living wage. And, and, and clearly you've then got Brexit working into this as well. So uh, for certain firms you know, who are reliant on migrant labour, that's an issue for them as well. So firms generally at the moment are feeling you know, a little bit hard done to in many ways. But there is a, a genuine support among firms, I think, for improving the skill base. And, and trying to drive productivity through investing in their people. The, the, the tricky thing, and, and this is always very difficult with, with apprenticeships, is how do you ensure that uh, firms aren't just rebadging? Mm. They aren't just sort of saying, well, we would have done this, this training anyway, let's take the money, let's call this an apprenticeship, mm. and thank you very much. And, and that's what government needs to stay on top of in order to make sure the policy actually works and does what it, they want it to do. Thank you for coming in.